Now, mm. let's talk about uh, something here that people get whatever about. So just here's my recommendation. Just listen and don't freak out till I'm done. Listen to what I have to say here, okay? So this is not even about the specific rating on Wednesday. This is a, this is a larger thing that we see a lot, okay? Dynamite on Wednesday did 824,000 viewers, down 8%, the lowest audience for the show since November 16. 18 to 49, fourth on cable, 0.27, down 10%, and the second lowest 18 to 49 of the year to date. Okay? Now, please listen carefully. Fourth on cable. That's great. Okay? It'd be better if it were first, but there's nothing wrong with being fourth on cable. Is this a catastrophic rating? No, it's not a catastrophic rating. Is the demo catastrophic? No, it's not. Okay? But Rampage, I don't want to say he's been doing catastrophic numbers, but Rampage is doing very bad numbers. Okay? And we talk about it a lot. And why is Dynamite not doing great numbers? Well, because they don't do big matches on that show. They do every now and then a big star will be on the show, but they will be facing somebody that with or without a robot telling you the lineup, you inevitably know who is going to win. It is an A level star versus a B or C or D level star. And the show is not doing well. Okay. Dynamite. Dynamite. And Dave has mentioned this a thousand times. Dave always looks at the Dynamite lineup, and he looks at the lineup, and he will say before the show goes on if he thinks the show is going to do well or if it's not going to do well. And why does he make that that uh, the suggestion? Because he looks at the, the lineup. What is the lineup for the show? Are there a lot of big marquee matches on the show? If there are, the show usually does well. And if there aren't, the show usually does not do well, okay? And when you looked at the lineup for Dynamite this week, this was not a big marquee lineup. I think we can all agree on that. And the show did 824,000 viewers and a .27, which are, are not great Dynamite numbers. What's my point, okay? My point. Once again, please listen. There is a narrative of late. There's two narratives. One is if they don't break a million, they're doing horrible. Like a, a million is some magical number. That if they cross one million, things are great. If they go below one million, things are horrible. Even if it's like 999,000, we see these, oh, it wasn't a million. That's one narrative. The other narrative is that there are no stories in AEW. WWE tells stories, and AEW does not tell stories. They just book matches. There's no storylines, okay? This is not true. There are storylines. Now, here is my point. I am not saying that there are no storylines. But what I am saying, what I have determined from all of this, is that the stories that they are telling, the stories that they are telling are significantly less important to the current AEW fan base than the matches themselves. In other words, these fans want to see these big matches, and they will watch the show and they will understand, for the most part, the storylines. But understanding the storylines and being invested in the storylines are two completely different things. There have been many times where I review the show and I go, I'm not quite sure what's going on here. And then, you know, the real hardcores will get on me. You weren't paying attention. You missed this. You missed that. The story makes sense. Well, maybe I missed something. But. The storyline making sense, whether you pay attention or you don't pay attention, it's, it's irrelevant. The story making sense, that's not the same as 
Do people care about the storylines? Now, the big difference between WWE and AEW is this. What's on SmackDown tonight? I'll tell you in a minute, but most of you listening probably have no idea what matches are on the show tonight. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But the reality is, whether you know or you don't know, and whether you find out or you don't, the WWE fans, whether they care about the matches on SmackDown tonight or not, they are going to watch it because they want to know what's next in certain storylines. They are more invested in these storylines than the matches. Whereas with AEW... If the ADA, and we see this from Rampage, and now we saw it here with Dynamite. If they don't care about the lineup for the show, there are a percentage of them who don't care enough about the storylines to tune in to find out what's how the storylines are going to progress. MJF storyline with Brian Danielson. I think they're doing a, a fairly good job with the storyline. It's not perfect, but if you look at the quarter hours, the MJF Brian Danielson storyline literally did exactly at the show average. I mean, it just did it just did the show average. It didn't do exceptionally good. It did not do exceptionally bad. So the fans that looked at the lineup for Dynamite and they were like, eh, you know, it's whatever. I mean, the matches are fine, but there's nothing I really want to see. They did not decide, well, I'm still going to watch the show because I want to know what's going on with the MJF Brian Danielson storyline. They are not invested in that storyline or any of the other storylines to the degree that WWE fans are invested in the WWE storylines. So this is not an issue of there are no storylines. This is not even an issue of is the storyline good or is the storyline bad? Because that is for each individual wrestling fan to determine on their own. It's subjective. But what is not subjective is there is less investment in those storylines amongst AEW fans than there is among WWE fans. So how you remedy this, what you do, I don't know. But I think that that's very clear from looking at these numbers. This is not a one-time thing. This is you can look back at lineups and the way that the AEW fans react to those lineups, and you can see that they're there for the matches. They're not there for the storylines. They may like them, they may not like them, but they are not there for them. They're there for the matches. I think you can apply that to the talent roster itself. You know, you really can. For all of the love that people have for MJF or Hangman Page or Moxley, are, do they feel larger than life right now? How many characters have they created? How many new people have there been to get behind? So that plays into part of this as well. Knock, knock, who's there? Ric Flair. Ric Flair who? No, Ric Flair who? <laughs> get that one <laughs> knock knock who's there <laughs> Bailey Bailey who we Bailey made it home in time to watch Smackdown that's Live. not how not my jokes work <laughs> we Bailey what does that mean she's small it's <laughs> we barely made it home oh, we <laughs> made it. <laughs> oh your Invisalign made you dumb <laughs> why did the referee referee's feet smell when he was working because he was a doodle <laughs> what <laughs> because he was a doodle his feet smelled because he was a doodle <laughs> yeah I don't get it <laughs> what? See, these, these, what? these are so dumb that they're funny am I high I, don't, I, I drove here I think I was sober when I got here if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.